Hello, and welcome to Assessment of the Abdomen for School Nurses, Part 1. My name is Elaine Ouellette. I am the School Nurse Regional Liaison for the Maine Department of Education, and I will be your presenter today. We're going to cover abdominal anatomy, abdominal assessment in the school setting, and review four skills, inspection, auscultation, palpation, and percussion. As you all know, subjective and objective data are part of any physical assessment. You always start with the subjective data, which is your history, before you do the physical assessment. I like to ask the open-ended questions first. Tell me how you're feeling today. You're not feeling well? Tell me more about that. What did you eat today? Where is the pain? If they can't explain it, you can ask point to where it hurts. How long have you had the pain? When did it start? What makes it better? What makes it worse? When was your last bowel movement? You can ask the menstrual history if applicable. Are you taking any medication? Pain with urination. You're looking for things in the history that may help guide the physical assessment. The more information you can gather, the more clues you have, the easier it will be for you to figure out the problem. If you make a referral, the more information you will have to give the medical provider. That will help the diagnosis and help the medical provider. Nurses can't diagnose, but you can provide as much detailed information as possible and the results of your assessment. You all learned in nursing school that the abdomen is divided into four quadrants, right and left upper quadrant, right and left lower quadrants, and three regions in the center, the epigastric, the umbilical, the hypogastric or suprapubic area. So let's look briefly at what lies in each quadrant superficially. The right upper quadrant has the liver and gallbladder. Rarely do we see problems in this quadrant in youth. Once in a while, you may see an obese high school um, or student with gallbladder issues, but that's not very common. An enlarged spleen in the left upper quadrant is very painful. And sometimes you'll see that after a bad case of mono. I've seen one case of a spleen problem besides mono in my nursing practice. And that was a student who had a skiing accident and had a tiny little tear in the spleen and the spleen was bleeding and the student had a lot of right upper quadrant pain. The appendix is the most concerning structure in the right lower quadrant and the small and large intestines cover most of the rest of the lower abdominal area. The deeper structures include the kidneys, ovaries, bladder, ureters, pancreas, etc. You all know where the anatomy is. I'm not going to spend more time on this. We're going to talk more about assessment. So when you're doing the abdominal assessment, there's four steps you need to follow. Visual inspection, auscultation, palpation, and percussion. To do a good abdominal assessment, the person needs to be laying flat in the supine position with the head relaxed and the arms at the side of the body. This position allows the abdominal wall muscles to relax completely, making your assessment easier. If you don't have an exam table, you can have the student lay on your cot and kneel or squat to do the assessment or have them scoot over on the cot and sit beside them if there's room. Inspection at school is typically done over clothing. 
You want to visualize the shape of the belly. Is it flat, rounded, protuberant, or scaphoid? A severe scaphoid shape may signal malnutrition, which is very rare. You will most commonly see flat and rounded abdomens. But as obesity becomes more prevalent, we're seeing more and more protuberant bellies. You're basically looking for gross abnormalities. Is the belly symmetrical? Do you see any obvious lumps like an umbilical hernia or a diaphragmatic her hernia is sometimes seen? Having the person cough or bear down sometimes will make this more visible. You all learned how to auscultate or listen to bowel sounds in nursing school. You can auscultate over clothing if the student is not wearing too many thick layers. You all know that peristalsis of the intestine produces bowel sounds as gas and fluid are moved through the intestinal lumen. Normally, bowel sounds are intermittent, they're low pitched, and they're gurgling sounds or clicks. When you do your abdominal assessment, you all know to use the diaphragm of your stethoscope. Where do you start the assessment? Typically, it's better to start at the same place all the time unless the person is having pain. If they have pain, you keep that area for last. If they're not having any specific areas of pain, you will start at the right lower quadrant and work your way around clockwise to the right upper quadrant left upper quadrant and the left lower quadrant. Normal findings are five to 30 bowel sounds per minute. You need to be patient. Sometimes you'll only hear one bowel sound every five to 10 seconds. You shouldn't hear continuous bowel sounds but intermittent sounds. If you hear constant gurgling and constant abdominal gurgling. This is often an early indication of an abdominal obstruction or somebody with severe diarrhea. Absent bowel sounds are defined as five minutes of no bowel sounds at all. And usually that will indicate a late abdominal obstruction. Vascular assessment is also part of the uh, abdominal exam, but we're not going to cover the vascular assessment today as that is not needed in the school nurse's office. So the most common findings in abdominal distension are the four Fs. Fat or obesity, feces or constipation, fetus or pregnancy, flatus gaseous distension. Percussion is done to determine the size and the density of the structures and organs inside the abdominal cavity and to detect the presence of air or fluid. The predominant signs of percussion in the abdomen are tympani and dullness. Tympany is heard over air-filled structures. Dullness is heard over fluid or solid organs. When a student has a belly ache, usually this is due to gaseous distension and is probably one of the most common complaints you're going to see in your school nursing office. At least it was in my office, especially at the elementary school. We're going to talk more about percussion after we discuss palpation and we'll have some time to practice. So palpation can be light or deep. You always want to start with light or superficial palpation. Usually you use one hand. Typically you start in the right lower quadrant and go clockwise around the belly, the same as you did for auscultation. Before you start palpating, 
remember to ask if there's any specific area of abdominal pain and you're going to make sure you start palpating that area last. You wanna ask them to cough and tell you if they experience pain and where the pain is. Pain with coughing will often indicate peritoneal inflammation. Common reasons for stomach pain when coughing, appendicitis, gallstones, kidney stones, diverticular disease, cystitis, or pancreatitis. The ideal position for you to be in to do an abdominal exam is on the right side of the patient or the student with the hand and the forearm in the same horizontal plane as their abdomen. To start palpation, you're gonna hold your fingers flat and press lightly on the abdomen. Without moving your fingers off the abdomen, you're going to make small circles with your fingers before going to the next location. So you start in the right lower quadrant, palpate, make a circle, and you make little circles all around using the flat part of your fingers on the abdomen. As you're palpating, you want to make sure you look at the student's face as you go around. You're going to look for grimace or any indications that they're having pain. They may not tell you there's pain, but sometimes you can see it in their face. Gas pains typically don't hurt if you palpate slowly. Palpating over a full bladder could be uncomfortable, but you're mainly looking for tenderness or any palpable mass or abnormality. If the student is nervous and tense, you can have them put the palmar surface of their fingers together, close their hands and have them pull outward. This is a good distractor and it may uh, help them relax the abdominal muscles as you're doing the exam. Applying gentle pressure to the abdomen should allow you to depress the abdominal wall muscles as they relax. If the muscles contract or tighten up as you're doing the exam, this is called muscle guarding and may indicate some type of underlying inflammation. So you're palpating and the person um, tightens up the muscles in the area of pain muscle guarding. Muscle rigidity involves involuntary stiffness of the abdominal wall muscles. An abdominal wall that resists your attempt to, to push down is called rigidity. So if the muscles are rigid and you're pushing down and you really can't push down, that's called muscle rigidity. And it usually indicates, again, peritoneal inflammation. A marked exacerbation of pain when you push down and suddenly release, push, suddenly release, pain with release is called rebound tenderness. And we're going to discuss rebound tenderness a little bit more in part two of abdominal assessment. With deep palpation, you want to go around a second time with the same technique you did with superficial palpation. You're going to do a deeper palpation. You can use one or two hands. And again, you start at the right lower quadrant and work your way around. Deep palpation of the abdomen is performed by placing the flat part of the hand on the abdomen and applying firm, steady pressure. And the other hand is on top. The upper hand exerts pressure while the lower hand is used to feel. You want to remember not to push too fast to do your exam slowly because if you're pushing down too rapidly, that may trap the air and create a gas pocket in the intestinal lumen 
and it could cause false positive tenderness. Percussion is the last skill that we're gonna be discussing today. You wanna place the middle finger of one hand on the area you wish to percuss and separate the other fingers away from the middle finger. You want to apply moderate pressure to the middle finger to create um, a good seal. Don't let the other fingers rest against the skin. You want to strike the middle section of the middle finger of the abdomen with the tip of the middle finger of your other hand using a quick, sharp, relaxed wrist motion. The hand that's on the abdomen is your non-dominant hand and your dominant hand is used to do the percussion. Again, you're gonna strike the middle section of the middle finger. Make sure there's a good seal on the abdomen. And usually you can strike once or twice. I like to strike twice when I do my exam. The striking finger needs to be flexed and it's coming from the wrist. And this takes practice. So I want you to try percussing your thigh. Middle finger over your thigh. Push down on the middle finger. This is your non-dominant hand. Your dominant hand strikes the middle part near the uh, distal interphalangeal joint. Practice on your thigh. Now I want you to try on your desk. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to puff out your cheek and try it on your cheek. You're going to fill your cheek with air. So you're going to hear timpani or hyper resonance when you percuss on your air filled cheek. course you're going to need more practice you can do this on your own there are many causes of abdominal pain a thorough history will most likely point you in the right direction to help you identify some of these causes here are some of the most common complications or some of the most common things you're going to see in the nurse's office. Acute constipation usually has an organic cause, such as gastroenteritis or appendicitis, while chronic constipation is usually caused by diet or lack of fluid intake, especially water. Kids don't drink enough water and their diets are often not healthy. Constipation is a symptom and has a subjective interpretation. So you need to make sure you clarify that if the student comes in and says they're constipated. During the assessment, you may feel a fecal mass in the suprapubic area with constipation. Sometimes if the student has encoparesis, you may be able to palpate a mass of stool in the descending colon in the left lower quadrant area. Stomach flu or viral gastroenteritis, again, the history is really important. There's usually watery diarrhea, abdominal cramps, 
nausea, and sometimes vomiting. There's severe cramping, and you may want to consider food poisoning when you see these symptoms. The most common cause of acute medical abdominal pain is the stomach flu or gastroenteritis. You'll often see indigestion, heartburn, and gaseous distension. Students that don't chew their food well, this makes digestion more difficult. So this is a good time for the school nurse to educate the student. Stress or anxiety can also cause students to have abdominal pain. These students are usually your frequent flyers. Listen to them, provide reassurance, and use this opportunity to teach them stress relieving techniques, such as deep breathing or other techniques to help them get through some of the anxiety they may be having. Pain with appendicitis usually begins in the umbilical area and moves to the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. The pain is worse with coughing or any type of a jarring movement. In part two of abdominal assessment, we're going to cover different um, assessments of the abdomen that will point you to acute appendicitis to identify acute appendicitis. Intestinal obstructions are not common in the school nurse's office, but when they happen, it's important that you can identify some of these symptoms, which include pain, usually in the center of the abdomen with distension, inability to pass gas, constipation, and sometimes vomiting. When there's any type of abdominal pain that's acute, you need to refer the student. You all know that. Just to review, any pain that is severe, pain that causes them to be very uncomfortable with just sitting, they have trouble finding even a sitting position without having pain. Fever, bloody stools, persistent or severe nausea and vomiting. Jaundice, severe tenderness with palpation, and any swelling of the abdomen. We've covered four basic skills today. You need to practice, practice, practice your assessment skills. The more that you practice, the more proficient you will become. We're going to learn more specific skills in part two of abdominal assessment. I hope. You will join me in viewing that part two. I want to thank you for listening today. Thank you for wanting to upgrade your skills. Thank you for all you do for the students in your school. You're greatly appreciated. Have a great day.